Hey folks, Joseph E. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which surprisingly enough, it's a disaster film called San Andreas. Yep, a movie about a rescue mission pilot, who's played by Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, who goes around rescuing a lot of people from a massive earthquake that's heading towards Northern and Southern California and Nevada from a San Andreas fault. Yep. Filled with glorious, bad CGI of the entire building and, and all the cities are all the way around into a major destruction. And I know, I mean, I've seen this movie before. In fact, I already saw the movie from 1974 that's just like this movie, only it had better special effects. And I know it has bad acting too, but who cares. But it was an all-star cast uh, of legendary actors, yeah, called Earthquake, yep, which would later become, you know, a theme attraction for uh, Universal Studios, Hollywood, yeah, part of the tour. But yeah, it was actually uh, the movie that that started it all, which basically was a tribute to all the earthquakes that we had. I'm, I'm always terrified at them because it's always, you know, it's always scary to having to live in a building where you know a major destruction is about to happen. Yeah, we're going to be able to feel the shakiness, all the tremors, and and then later the aftershocks, all of that. It's like you're starting to feel the rumble that's about to happen. And trust me, being in Southern California, we have felt a lot of that. I mean, especially when we had the worst one, like, over 20 years ago, which was the... Uh, the Northridge earthquake, and yes, I remember that actually happened during the earlier mornings of, of that particular Monday, which was actually on the day of um, the Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. Um, was when oh man, that was like a major one, and it it actually destroyed uh, several houses. It damaged a lot of buildings all the way around Northridge. There was a huge fire. Um, it even damaged the freeway ramps all the way around. You know, several people got killed from that. It was definitely the worst one that we ever had. You know, even though the previous ones uh, were the, the earlier ones that we got. I mean, it was the worst. But luckily we survived because we weren't, even though we felt it, at least we weren't actually near from where we were. So we were lucky. But then, of course, uh, from time to time, you know, we've been felting, you know, lots of aftershocks and a lot of rumbling at times. I mean, we're mostly getting small earthquakes nowadays. Yeah, especially in recent times, too. And and it's just, wow. I, I, I mean, every time I keep hearing something shaking throughout the entire room, I feel like I just want to race. <laughs> and get out of there before it's too late you know trying to find a better place you know, just so I could be protected but I know it's not easy <laughs> no, it isn't because it's scary and that's why I'm not a big fan of that but back to this um, I, I considered uh, you know disaster movies as guilty pleasures for me because I have seen several of them with uh, besides Earthquake I've seen the Towering Inferno the airport films um, the Poseidon Adventure, When Time Runs Out, and even the films from the 90s such as Twister, yeah, the, uh, the Tornado film, yeah, along with uh, Independence Day, which was um, an alien invasion film that's, in, in a way, a disaster film too. You know, with Godzilla, of course, and movies like Deep Impact, you know, Volcano, Dante's Peak, and then we have Armageddon, of course, and several others that followed. I mean, we had The Day After Tomorrow. And then, of course, that terrible, you know, 2012, which just really sucks. I didn't like that film at all. And I know the last the disaster film we had was a found footage movie called Into the Storm. Yeah. Pretty forgotten as we know it, but, yeah. But now comes San Andreas, um, which is... Basically what it is, Earthquake Part 2, but with more CGI, yeah, corny dialogue, 
and pretty much has the same uh, prediction just like in the film 2012. It almost makes that film look like a masterpiece as we know it. So, <laughs> so let's get right to it. It stars Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. He had always been best known as a former WWE wrestler who would later turn out to be an actor. Carla Gugino, who's been always this good in several films including um, True Beverly Hills and Son-in-Law. Alexandra Daddario from the film uh, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief along with its sequel. Hugo Johnson Burt, Art Parkinson, Jan Grefred, who's been best known as playing Mr. Fantastic in the first two uh, Fantastic Four films. Yeah, the ones before we had the reboots. Yeah, Archie Punjaba, Paul Giamatti, who's always been good as an actor. Yeah, Will Young Lee, Kylie Minogue, the Australian pop singer, also very hot too, by the way, and winds up being in films like Street Fighter and Biodome, yeah, that terrible film with Polly Shore and Stephen Baldwin. Alec uh, Yugoff, Marissa Nedling, Todd Williams, Colton Hayes, Morgan Griffin, and Matt Gerald. The movie is written by Colton Kuss, who has been best known for writing screenplays for TV shows like The Adventures of Rizzo County Jr., Lost, and of course uh, TV shows like Bates Motel and The Strain. And it's directed by Brad Payton who's been best known for directing that other film, also with uh, The Rock, Journey to the Mysterious Island, yep, which is a sequel to The Journey to the Center of the Earth with Brendan Fraser. The movie begins somewhere in the San Fernando Valley, where we meet a young girl who's driving around in the mountains, where all of a sudden she's being knocked over the road and crashed into all the way down into the cliff, where suddenly the Los Angeles Fire Department Air Rescue pilot named Raymond Ray Gaines, who's played by Dwayne Johnson, had came to the rescue to save the young girl who was already being stuck into the car, was ready to get out, and until they got her out of there with the help of the, the second team, and the car crashes, and, and she was safe. You know, already Ray is in the midst of being divorced by his wife Emma who's played by Carla Giugino and was planning on a trip to San Francisco with his daughter Blake who's played by Alexandra Daddario. But meanwhile Caltech somologist Lawrence Hayes who's played by Paul Giamatti along with his colleague Dr. Kim Park who's played by Will Young Lee were basically studying about the predictions of earthquakes that's happened all across California in Nevada, only to find out that there's a fault that's actually um, heading towards uh, these two states. It turns out to be a San Andreas fault. So during their research, they went all the way to Hoover Dam in Nevada, you know, just trying to you know predict everything that's about to happen until they suddenly triggered the 7.1 magnitude earthquake that's collapsing the entire dam. You know, everybody had to escape, all the bridges were damaged, and suddenly, you know, just just as Kim was ready to save the girl from being stuck towards the uh, the bridge and, and the dam, suddenly, uh, Lawrence had went over there, you know, already grabbed the girl, and then Kim already being stuck between the fault line, had to kill them completely with the dam aside. So... Yeah, that was probably one of the worst ones that they ever experienced. Yeah, because he, even he told the, the little girl not to watch. Well, so then, Ray was already called into work, you know, because of what happened. But then he discovered that Blake uh, wants up with her mother's new boyfriend, Daniel Riddick, who's played by Eon Guifrud, to San Francisco. Right, you know, well... While Emma, already in Los Angeles, was about to have lunch with Daniel's sister, Susan, who's played by Kylie Minogue. Uh, which, that's when, already as Hayes discovered that the San Andreas Fault is shifting and soon will cause a major earthquake, when the entire city was collapsing. 
which actually triggers 9.1 magnitude earthquake already. Uh, and with Susan Amon with all the casualties during the event was about to escape from the building that's already being collapsed. And and this is probably one of the stupidest scenes I've ever saw. But cuz I know maybe they just they're just going in for laughs. But when Susan was about to race into the emergency exit, you know, just to get to the uh, on top of the building, you know, trying to escape along with the rest of the people, you know, Emma was about to go into the, the same exit the way that she went, because they already raced into it. Then suddenly the earthquake uh, crashes in, you know, as she got fallen over. And then when she was about to open the door, we see several people actually falling through their depths, with one guy actually hanging onto the line, and, and he fell. I presume that Susan actually got killed when this happened. So that's just bullshit. I mean, hey, I mean, it could have been worse. We probably would have ever seen Susan in a horrible death, as we know it. But, nope, they just have to throw in this, this stupid bullshit CGI garbage in, in the mix. So, anyway, soon Emma, already on top of the building that's just ready to be collapsed, was saved by Ray by going up to the helicopter and, and trying to f find her daughter, who was already in San Francisco, you know, with... Daniel's office where she meets um, Ben, who's an engineering student from England, along with his brother Ollie. They're both played by Hugo Johnson Burt and Art Parkinson. So apparently Daniel and Blake were about to leave, but was soon got trapped in their car at a parking garage after a strain of earthquakes, which suddenly, you know, Blake got stuck into the, the back of the car, you know, because her leg got caught just when it killed the driver from the, the the concrete that fell into him and while Daniel was about to you know to leave just so he can find someone call for help you know so they can save her suddenly uh, Ben and, and Ollie had found Blake and it was about to to rescue her and escape uh, already in the streets uh, of San Francisco already ready to be des to be destroyed they went into a local uh, electronic store just so they can make some contact to find out if Ray and Emma are there, so that way they'll, they'll be they'll be on their way to rescue them. And they did. So suddenly uh, Ray's helicopter fails, forcing them to make an emergency landing at a shopping mall in, in Bakersfield, which suddenly was a in the middle of the chaos of looting, where everybody's just stealing a lot of stuff at the shopping center. So he stole a truck, you know, with Emma. And they escape. They they wind up crossing an old couple whose uh, car just broke down. Just once they discovered the the San Andreas fault already uh, crashing in into the side of the road. Yeah, and it was a huge one at that. Yeah, it was like next to the gas station. So then um, they also found out that the old couple um, was in an aviator fire. So. So they went to the aviation where Ray and Emma just found an airplane and was ready to fly just so they can once again go after them. Just so they can get to uh, San Francisco in time. Because they're trying to find a place to, to meet so that way they can signal them to the what seems to be the Koi Tower which Daniel actually was planning to build. Um, and that way Ray and Emma were, were forced to parachute into the city where suddenly the 9.6 magnitude earthquake was about to occur. Yeah, they actually landed into the AT&T park, yeah, the baseball field, and you know, that was probably the most memorable scene right there, um, where, where he actually says, what is it like to get into second base? <laughs> um, I gotta admit, that was, that was fun. But then, already, you know, they're about to escape. Um, they were already hitting a tsunami, as we know it. They're trying to get all the people safe from all the way into the field so that way they don't get um, you know get caught. Well, Daniel, of course, was already running from his life. Suddenly the the boat and the cargo ship uh, had went straight into the, the San Francisco bridge and actually kills Daniel from a cargo box. Yeah, there's bad CGI right there. 
Yeah, this is just pretty much like you see in video games. <laughs> but you see this a lot in movies. So, already uh, there, Blake, Bland, and Ollie was running into the building, which the tsunami starts hitting, knocking over several buildings, leaving Daniel's building flooded. Once uh, they were still there, you know, already sinking beneath the water, Ray and and uh, Emma had finally arrived. You know, while they were, they were on the speedboat, while Ray was about to save uh, his daughter Blake, who's already stuck in uh, on the door that's already been flooded. You know, and he was trying to get, uh, get it open. That way he can get Blake out of there, because already she was about to drown. So then. Uh, Emma had finally came to the rescue by, by driving the, the speedboat into the building so that way they can get everybody out of there. And when they did, yeah, Ray was about to save um, Blake by giving her CPR. Yep, and she was okay. So then they were finally, uh, already they, they were all safe. They were happily reunited together. And they, they were headed into the relief camp where suddenly they were talking about their future um, as the rescue vehicles are descending radically alter the landscapes of San Francisco Bay area. So they're all safe. But the movie, however, isn't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'll give you this. Um, it had its moments. There were some several scenes that even I just mentioned, the one with the AT&T Park scene and all the other ones that they went into, but at the same time, it's just pretty boring. I mean, it's just another disaster movie filled with bad CGI, lousy dialogue such as pretty much the same cliché dialogue you often hear in several movies such as, Oh my God, um, Oh Shit. <laughs> And all this other crap that they put into it. Alexander D'Addario, um, she's okay. She wasn't anything special as uh, the daughter Blake. I mean, I don't know. I mean, coming from the movie Percy Jackson, I don't think she's that great of an actress. I'll be honest with you, but hey, it could have been worse. The two actors, uh, Hugo Johnson Bird and Art Parkinson, they were okay also, but, you know, once again, nothing special to them, but they're just basically, you know, just your typical guys, you know, as brothers, you know, just going around bickering with each other, and they're, and they're both trying to fall in love with Blake because she's more attractive, you know, so on and so forth, and his older brother is nervous all the time, and, you know, while Ollie is just, you know, already visiting to San Francisco, because even though she's in love with her too, you know, because they want to visit and everything, you know, like any other. Because they were tourists anyway. They were also about to get a job as well. Um, there was that one scene where already, you know, Ben, who's already been hurt, you know, trying to hide into the uh, the streets, you know, with, once again, another destruction. You know, he was about to kiss uh, Blake, and then just when Ollie had showed up, he was... <laughs> He was about to say to to them, wait till you see how our mother's going to like her. Or something like that. It's just, <laughs> come on, seriously? They're just, they're just going for a funny moment right there. I, I just didn't do it for me. Uh, Drain Johnson, you know, who, who's been good in several stuff that he's been in, you know, in some movies. I think he deserved a better action film, don't you think? I mean, once again, you know, this is just another, you know, disaster film that was just not needed, and he was just cast in for a paycheck. Uh, Cartagena was okay. Uh, Paul Giamatti was good in the film, too. But then there were some stupid scenes, too, in the movie. I mean, come on. I, and that, that does kind of piss me off, too. I mean, yeah, because Danny was just about to help... Um, you know, Blake, you know, already because they're getting stuck in, in the car with the concrete already, you know, killing the driver. And Blake is like saying, oh, he's an asshole because, you know, he left her behind. Uh, no, because apparently he was trying to find some help. But unfortunately, he got stuck in the middle of the huge crowd that's already about to escape. 
from the massive earthquake that's about to happen. I mean, this is bullshit. And then, and then of course, you know, they, they even got Emma, you know, calling his house, telling him that, you know, that, you know, she's going to kill him if, you know, for actually leaving his daughter there. I mean, fucking bullshit. It's so stupid. I don't know what were they thinking. Yeah, I mean, you call him an asshole because he was trying to save her. Bull. Fucking bull. I mean, they all deserve better than this. Uh, I, I, I just wouldn't recommend it. It's pretty much, you know, Earthquake Part 2. Um, mix in with 2012, because we already know how bad 2012 was. This one is just way worse. But it's just more forgotten than ever before, so. And this movie just made money at the box office. Out of its budget of 110 million, yeah, out of 470.5 million dollars. Wow, I mean, just wow. I am so glad I didn't see this movie in the theater because it'd be a waste of money. And I went to see a better film that day, that particular weekend, and I'm just glad. I was so happy that I went to see that, you know, and that, of course, was Mad Max Fury Road. And that movie deserved more money than this piece of crap does. I just, I'm so ashamed that this movie gets all the credit while Mad Max Fury Road already, you know, becoming as we know it. Didn't want it, but number one, because I know um, Pitch Perfect took over. You know, Pitch Perfect 2, that is. It's just ridiculous. I mean, this is why uh, Mad Max deserved more of its money than, than this film does. I mean, because five years from now, this movie will just be long forgotten. It will be into the bargain bins of Walmart and all the other stores. And you probably won't be, won't be able to know about it by now. So I say skip it. So anyway, I give San Andreas one and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.